Let's get the Thomas Massey video up, uh, Cheese Slice, really quick. Fam, when uh, Jerry Nadler is the voice of reason, right? <laughs> if that ever happens, listen to this video here. Check this out. More problematically, the resolution suggests that all anti-Zionism, it states that all anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. That is either intellectually disingenuous or just factually wrong. And it unfairly implicates many of my orthodox former constituents in Brooklyn, many of whose families rose from the ashes of the Holocaust. While most anti-Semitism is indeed anti-Semitic, the authors, if they were at all familiar with Jewish history and culture, should know about Jewish anti-Zionism that was and is expressly not anti-Semitic. This resolution ignores the fact that even today, certain Orthodox Hasidic Jewish communities, the Satmar in New York and others, as well as adherents of the pre-Jewish state, uh, pre-state Jewish labor movement, have held views that are at odds with the modern Zionist conception. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, quote, the anti-Zionist worldview of the ultra-Orthodox groups like the Satmar Hasidim, perceives Zionism and the establishment of the state of Israel as an anti-Messianic act. That is to say that these ultra-Orthodox Hasidic Jews believe that only the Messiah can bring about the true Israel. And I assure you, the Satmar Hasidic Jews are certainly not anti-Semitic. I should also note that there are those who try to smear even progressive pro-Israel supporters with the inappropriate label of Israel hater or anti-Zionist. Under this resolution, those who love Israel deeply but criticize some of its policy approaches could be considered anti-Zionist. That could make every Democratic Jewish member of this body because they all criticize the, re the recent Israeli judicial reform package de facto anti-Semites. Might that be the author's intention? Again, let me be unequivocally clear. Most anti-Zionism, particularly in this moment, has a real anti-Semitism problem. But no. we cannot fairly say that one equals the other. As the most senior Jewish member in this house, with perhaps the largest Jewish constituency in this country, I have always and will always support real, meaningful legislation to combat anti-Semitism. This, of course, is deeply personal for me and for so many of my constituents. Indeed, I take a backseat to no one in this body when it comes to fighting against this scourge. In the aftermath of October 7th, we have a moral obligation to act to protect our own Jewish citizens and our critical ally, Israel. I pray that the GOP majority makes today the day that they stop playing these partisan games and commit themselves to doing the real work to protect Jewish lives. There is not a single minute to spare. I reserve the balance of my time. So, fam. Your thoughts on that? Because, listen, I think he, you know, does bring out some very important points. Uh, however, he does kind of go back to toe the line. And I think this is what would justify probably some of his votes to fund Israel with as much weaponry as possible mm -hmm. because of the fact that he'll immediately say Hamas is a terrorist organization. And, that, you know, but I guess there was a excuse my French, pardon my French here, a shit line in which. Even Jerry Nadler, the most senior Jewish member of Congress, according to his words, says, well, no, that's going too far. And especially for the, a lot of Hasidic Jews in, in my district, that is just simply inaccurate to conflate the uh, the you know, the same thing that anti-Semitism is anti-Zionism. Go ahead, fam. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I feel from his stance the same way I feel about Pierce. Like they're not mm -hmm. in, they're still extremely supportive of Israel. They're still going to yep. have these Zionist tendencies and say, you know, most anti Zionism is anti Semitic. They'll still toe that line. But the reality is, is even those people are having to admit that this is going too far in terms of yep. equating uh, anti Semitism, all of it, with uh, anti Zionism. And so it's, it's just, it just shows you that this again, Israel's Israel's actions have pushed people away. Even some of their most ardent supporters are having to put a stop to it, are having to distance themselves. And yeah. that is actually something that is actually proving that Israel is losing this propaganda war. But they are also uh losing on the battlefield in terms of their their losses that, that are being inflicted on them. And the only reason that people don't think that is because they're killing so many Palestinian 
but they're killing civilians. They're not yeah. defeating yeah. the actual resistance factions that are actually inflicting much damage on their soldiers and much damage on their weapons and artillery. So that is, is exactly it. And by the way, if you think that Palestine and the Palestinian resistance stands alone uh, because Iran hasn't involved itself, because Hezbollah has only from a distance involved itself, uh, you must understand that the resistance will only come in when they feel that the Palestinians need them to come in. They won't come in before then. That that has been said by Nasrallah, and it's also been uh, alluded to by um, the government of Iran and the factions within Iran and others. So, but fam, you, that, let me let me can that, I, can I get a little pushback there said. one second? Can I get a little pushback there? Is that a wise decision right now? Because they're starting to clear out southern Gaza now of all the civilians. Shouldn't their jumping in be a deterrent for Israel to quit bombing Gaza altogether? I mean, maybe the Al Qassam Brigade and the Hamas and the Palestinian resistance is very much really taking it to the gut of the IDF. Right? We don't hear a lot of reporting on that, but you know, we see some stuff through the back channels in our echo chamber yeah. of Israeli soldiers crying in the middle of the night, going to feel like they're fighting ghosts. Hamas is just popping out of, t of tunnels, enabling tanks, and tanks are pretty much useless in this type of war, this guerrilla warfare where, you know, they're not prepared, the IDF, to fight this war. Shouldn't Hezbollah be jumping in right now to deter Israel from bombing southern Gaza, the civilians? If Hezbollah jumps in too much, then it becomes an all-out conflict. And they mm -hmm. don't, again, this is a criticism that has been brought on Hezbollah many times. And, you know, I will tell you, ask that question to Marwa Osman, because she has... Uh, answer this question many times. Uh, they have provided a lot of assistance already, but they will not go in unless they feel like they have to go in. And that's just a statement that they have been making. Uh, yeah. You know, you could think that maybe perhaps they could provide more support to stop the uh, genocide of, of Palestinians. But at the same time, there are two things happening. There is Israel using the genocide of mostly women and children to show strength, but that's a, a separate problem in terms of what is actually happening on the war. Remember, these are not soldiers, these are civilians that they're killing. And if it were any other conflict, if Putin had gone into Ukraine and started killing all of the civilians living in Kiev and in all of these cities in Odessa and, and then said, and you know, okay, now we're also gonna start going after the uh, Ukrainian military, he wouldn't have been allowed to even do that, not even for long. I mean, people would have been like, what are you doing? This is a violation of blah, blah, blah. But because it's Palestinians and because it's Israel, this has been allowed by the entire world. And, and people have to understand that in a way, um, there, there's this feeling that this is what had to happen. This, there was no other recourse. There was no yeah. other method to go because nobody was paying attention until Israel, uh, you know, let out a cry and Palestinians let out a cry on October 7th. And, and Israel received a taste of the medicine that they had uh, been giving to Palestinians, a very small fraction indeed, but still. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that question, I, I say, ask uh, Marwa Osman yeah. and see how she answers that one. I, no, I hear you. I hear you.